access to health care, and we're starting. Oh, thank you. Sorry, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to do a clinic at Esperanza at St. Joseph's and a nurse managed clinic. A nurse managed clinic is uh, um, in the area that I'm at. I've known that area for a long time, and uh, I feel closest to this community. And there's always been a lot of many health care services that have come to the area in Brownsville, but West Brownsville seems to have been forgotten. Okay. Um, a nurse managed center in the United States is uh, usually initiated by grants, and then after they have been uh, uh, working successfully, then they uh, start serving the indigent. This clinic will be more or less a free, free clinic. I don't like to say free clinic because actually nothing is free, but um, it will be that we will be able to build Medicaid and Medicare insurance, but we will be able to see those that have no insurance or no, no finances on a sliding scale. Okay. And nurse managed standards have been located in Arizona, New York, Tennessee, and Texas, and we would like, to, uh, our goal is to establish one here in Brownsville. And the value is, is for provision of services to traditionally underserved populations to educate the participants with self-management of their chronic and acute illnesses. Okay. The area around St. Joseph's Church is uh, one of the city's low-income areas divided by the railroad tracks. Okay. When the railroad goes through, it, it ha prevents access to the emergency services. And we did uh, data, uh, we obtained some data and we found out that 90% of the people around there do not have insurance. 75% have problems obtaining health services due to the cost. And, and the main problem is lack of health insurance. And with a high prevalence of diabetes, cardiovascular, and chronic disease, and early discharge from the hospital, they usually end up in the emergency room very quickly because they have nobody that can help them monitor their illness and uh, um, keep it uh, teaching them prevention and better their life. The benefits of a nurse managed clinic in the vicinity would reduce duplication of services. It would increase the health care access to the people. It would improve the continuity of care, and it would maintain a healthier outcome of our parishioners and community. In, it would increase the reporting of screening results, and it would be access to monitor the individualized care, decreasing the emergency visits to the hospital, and promoting preventive education and screenings, and follow-up of clients in their home and neighborhood. The scope of practice of a nurse managed clinic is a registered nurse graduated with a degree in advanced practice nursing. We are regulated by the state, by the Board of Nursing, and uh, trained in diagnosis and management of common medical conditions. We provide a broad range of health care services, including chronic illnesses, and we provide individualized care, prevention, wellness, and patient education. The duties of a nurse practitioner focus on patient's conditions, the effects of illness on the patient and family. We inform and encourage the patient and family to participate in decisions to their health care. We conduct research. We are active in patient advocacy activities and care, and the care that we give is varies and regulated by the state. Uh, in the nurse managed clinic, we collaborate and we will provide referrals for physicians and other health professionals as needed. We will counsel and educate patients on health behaviors, self care skills, and treatment options. We diagnose and treat acute illness, infections, and injuries. And we diagnose, treat, and monitor chronic diseases such as diabetes, high blood pressure, respiratory problems. Okay. 
and we obtain medical histories in conducting physical examinations. What we need uh, is, uh, what I come to present to you here is because that area has a lot of elderly people and like I said, it's very low income. And what we would like, uh, we will be able to uh, offer the services to these people and what we would need is if there's any kind of, um, Mr. Paul Cavanaugh has been helping us so that we we'll see if we can find some grants. We have a building that we have been given to us for 25 years, but it has to be remodeled or demolished and built in order to do it. And Mr. Garza is working with a, with a architect to see what it is that we can. This is something that as an educator, I see a lot of the people come back into the emergency room in very acute problems and they are stabilized and then sent back home critically with nobody to check and see if they're doing their care correctly or not. Uh, I think that we need to do something for these people and if there's any way that you can help us you know, come with this program, I would greatly be appreciated. Do you, do you have any questions? I talk very fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> May I just like to say, uh, Ms. Olin, as we've met before, and I'm glad we did to talk about this issue. Um, Health care is very, very important to all of our citizens, the young and the old. Um, and what you are going to try to do, I, I will do my best to, to help as much as possible to, you know, see that we can make, make things work, at least take the right step forward. Um, I know St. Joseph Catholic Church has been very instrumental in this and will continue to partner and do as much as possible to see this come to fruition. So I appreciate your leadership and everyone else's in, again, putting something forward that is very, very important and, and needed in this community. So thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Were you going to speak, Mr. Garcia? Were you going to speak? No. Okay. Workshop item B, discussion regarding Promotora program with Med Team Incorporated. Mayor, this next group is a program, uh, Promotora, I think, I hope I said that correct, um, which is sponsored by Med Team, Med Team Inc. And uh, Gloria Hamby is here, Gonzalez uh, is here to uh, discuss what the program is. Uh, again, it's, it's health care related, but uh, I wanted to make sure we highlight these group of uh, uh, beautiful ladies who are really making an effort in the community to, again, help elderly and, uh, and foster health care. Thank you, Edward. Good afternoon, distinguished mayor and gentlemen of the commission and all of our fine citizens and servants of the city of Brownsville. I appreciate greatly your time and attention to us this afternoon. With me I have members of MedTeam Inc. Home Health and Community Care Program Services. We are a home health agency that provides services to individuals in our own community. I myself have been in the home health and health care industry for uh, close to 30 years. So I started when I was a year old, right? <laughs> I don't think so. But I have lived in the city of Brownsville all of my life, and most of the ladies that are here with me today have also lived in our fine city. Uh, we are coming as an agency to meet the need of the individuals in our community. We have heard the president's recent uh, cry for volunteerism, for coming forth and giving back to the community. And that's what Med Team Inc. is doing now. We initiated a new program to the city of Brownsville called the Promotadora Program on April 24, 2009. And we had the privilege of having Mr. Edward Camarillo join us there at that time. Um, the agency is a part of a greater agency called the medical team and the home care team. And it is owned and run by very dedicated individuals that uh, feel the need to service communities with health care as they need. Our primary goal is to provide home health, nursing, and therapy services to those individuals that meet 
the requirements as uh, the regulations for Medicare and Medicare uh, Kaid services provide. And in addition, through state funded programs for providers in the home through the primary home care service. Uh, when we introduced the Promotadora program to the city of Brownsville, it was all of a sudden as the floodgates of heaven opened because Mrs. Beatriz Van Olen is one of my role models and a person that I've known most of my life also asked me to serve on the board uh, of the nurse uh, managed program of the St. Joseph Parish where I've been a member most of my life also. And at the same time, uh, Mary Healy with the Texas Medical Foundation also came to talk to us about a new program called the Ask Me Three. Now I know this is a lot of information and I have provided you with packets, but what our main goal is, is to provide, and this, by the way, is going to be free of charge for the city, for the individuals we service, um, we, the company itself is taking the cost of paying the promotadoras of, of providing the information that we provide for the individuals in, our, in um, our city. And what we have found through studies provided through the government with the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid Services, um, there are many individuals that are not uh, being able to manage their own health care. They are not able to gain access to community resources and their families are also uh, finding themselves unable to participate in the individual's needs. We find mostly it is the elderly that are suffering from these problems. Um, we find that they end up uh, going back and forth in the network of of services within the city, but they really can't find their right place. What MedTeam Inc. has done is taken individuals and trained them on how to find out what are the problems of those individuals that they will be servicing and how can we help them gain access to uh, the services that are available for their needs. Now we have noted that especially the elderly who have chronic illnesses and as Ms. Von Olin did mention, diabetes is one of them. Diabetes is a, like a plague down in our area. Uh, one out of three, and I dare to say one out of two individuals have diabetes. Some are not even aware that they are diabetic already. This poses a great problem for the individuals, especially those that have no insurances and do not meet the requirements of Medicare or Medicaid. So what we need to do is provide a service that helps teach them to be better managers of their health care. As I said before, we are targeting basically the elderly, but that is not going to stop us from providing information to the younger population. We have provided presentations in the school system uh, for the parents that um, meet on a regular basis. But now we are stepping up to going into the senior apartments, the city of Brown Brownsville's housing, uh, and into private homes and into churches where we can present to groups. We understand that an individual's ability to understand and comprehend all this material is very hard because you're taking people who are elderly, chronically ill, and have difficulties understanding the process. If we put them in a classroom setting, you're not going to gain their attention for a very long time. So therefore, you address them on their ability <coughs> to comprehend and with materials that will be easily uh, read or followed up with. What we have done is collaborated with the Texas Medical Foundation and the Centers for Medicare and Medicare Services to provide a package of information with the Ask Me Three program. 
And it, what it does is it takes three simple questions that individuals can learn and take with them when they go to their doctor visits or if they're hospitalized or if they have nursing services or pharmacy services. Ask me three. What is my health problem? What do I need to do to help myself with my problem? And how will I benefit by following the regime that you are providing me with? And we help the people learn how to keep a uh, um, health history and a medication profile because we have seen a lot of individuals are unaware of their current diagnosis. They also are not aware of their medications and they may go from physician to physician and end up having um, unneeded hospitalizations due to medication errors. We're taking part in an, uh, in an initiative that is being introduced in several parts of the country and we are hoping and I dare say we are going to see good results with this program. One, because it is free of charge. Two, is because you've got dedicated individuals that will be out there providing these classes. We know that these individuals are elderly. Most of them have uh, difficulty understanding the English language, so we're providing this in Spanish. And we are putting this information at their level of comprehension. So I wanted to introduce the individuals of this program, and I wanted to let you know that we are here to help. We are here to take responsibility and to help train people to be responsible because we know that a healthier individual is then making a better and healthier community and it helps everybody be happier. So we think it's a real win-win situation and we hope to come back to the commission, let's say in six months to a year and tell you, look at all the healthy, healthy happy people and families in Brownsville. So I'd like to introduce our customer services manager and the manager of the Promotadora program, Mrs. Ana Gonzalez. And then right next to her, do you look stand up this way? Hmm. Mrs. Otila Vega is one of our Promotadoras. Maria Gamboa, Maria Gamboa is another one of our Promotadoras. We also have um, Mrs. Galarza, Maricela Sierra. And then we have two of our own Medicine Inc. Uh, primary Home Care Supervisors, Hilda Garcia and Joanne Goldman. Congratulations. So I'm the administrator and a registered nurse. Thank you very much. And thank you, Edward. No, thank you, Gloria. I appreciate that.
六，六。
Executive, se executive session, Number. item A, yeah. presentation, discussion, and possible action pursuant to Texas Government Code, section 551.086, <coughs> regarding purchase of all or part of AEP Texas North's ownership interest in the Oakland Union Unit Number 1 generation facility. I would move to put executive session out of order to the end of the meeting. I second that. And I would also move that we move post-election business to the current so that we have the administration of oath of Commissioner Committee. Second. Motion. Second. A motion is second on
this is a six of lives. So, <coughs> what does your blood say? <laughs> Do you want me to start? We need to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. We have Mr. Calvin Walker Jr. for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Uh, we have a young man that will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Mr. Calvin Walker Jr. I've I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Texas Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Texas one and it is. I asked Gary Wilhite to come do the prayer tonight. He is uh, basically a youth pastor to the city of Brownsville. Uh, youth come from churches all over town to his events, and he'll be telling about the one on Saturday as well. Thank you. Well, Father, we just lift up this uh, meeting tonight to you, Lord, realizing that you put our leaders in place, Father, and that as citizens of Brownsville, Lord, we're called to to support our leaders, to pray for our leaders. So, Lord God, we just pray for unity tonight, Father, and that your hand would be upon Brownsville and upon our youth, Lord God, this summer. We just pray that your will would be done in Brownsville. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Can I just say a couple of things real quick? It'll be okay. I, I left you, I, I put a flyer up there. Yeah, we're going to have an event at the, that facility there for youth. And so I just wanted to make you all aware of that. The city of a Brownsville community type endeavor. And we want to bring our youth together in unity across the churches. Just like we want unity here, we want unity in our youth. And so I also appreciate all the parks and everything that you guys have done for young people in this town, especially the skaters, because they don't fit in the regular programs. And so I just wanted to say that too. <coughs> oh, it's, uh, it's from 12 noon to 12 midnight. Uh, at 3226 Coffee Port Road. It's a square acre, and we'll be having like nine or ten bands playing all day. Give us a landmark so people can Old Port Isabel Road and Coffee Port. Yeah. You can't miss it. There's a sign, there's a sign right there uh, lit up. And we want young people, high school, college age, particular teenagers, to come. And whether they go to church or not, we want to get them plugged in, connected. And really, we want to facilitate, uh, you know, them in the body of Christ ultimately Thank and you. across across churches Catholic Protestant we just want the churches to come together Thank you Welcome to People's House here <coughs> uh, We're here to do people's business We'll start with the uh, post-election business Item number one Item number one, post-election business, consideration and action regarding the administration of the oath of office the issuance of statement of appointment an assumption of duties by Commissioner-elect Edward Camarillo for District 4. Congratulations, order for Mr. Camarillo for the winner of District 4. Uh, you will be uh, sworn in at this time. His family, uh, welcome to join him. Whomever else you want to hear. Welcome, Judge. Welcome. We have the Honorable Janet Yao, Commissioner of the Oath. And we have his parents, who uh, have known for many, many years to see you. Mr. Lee, Mr. Warren. Mr. Woods. Mr. Potter. Would you read item one for your 
Yes, I did, sir. I asked him, do you want me to bring you in first or do you want me to talk first? Because you know I'm going to talk. <laughs> I need to do it before I can do it after. Uh, thank you all for being here today. This is a, a big honor for me uh, that Edward asked me to come out and swear him in. Uh, when you're a member of the city commission, you get very little gratitude sometimes. Uh, you, you work for free. Uh, you put in long hours. Uh, this is, what you see here is not all they do. They do a lot of after hour things and they do a lot of volunteer work. And anytime anyone from the community invites them over to do something, well, they go and they're involved. Well, this young man, at a very young age, became getting involved in politics, even before he graduated college. He was involved in, in the college, working and supporting people and doing work for the community. And then he decided he didn't want to just work for the college community, he wanted to work for the community at large in the city of Brownsville. So he has been your commissioner for the past four years, and he still didn't get enough abuse and decided he was going to run again. <laughs> And as you can see his family behind him, that's the way it always is. His family is always behind him and always supporting him in his endeavors. And they're always there for him. And it's a great show of the love his family has for him. Because they are not only here today for him, but they're here every day for him. They're here when he needs someone to talk to or, or talk about things with. He can call his family and his family's always there. And any time you see him, you see him with some member of the family because they're always together. It's a very united family, and they're all very, very proud of Edward and the work that he does for the citizens of Brownsville. And I'm very proud that I was asked to come and swear him in today. I, Edward C. Camarillo. I, Edward C. Camarillo, do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm that I will faithfully execute, that I will faithfully execute the duties, the duties as district commissioner for, as, as district commissioner for of the city of Brownsville, of the city of Brownsville, Cameron County, Cameron County, of the state of Texas, of the state of Texas, and will, and will to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, preserve, preserve, protect, protect and defend, and defend the Constitution. And laws, and laws of the United States, of the United States and, of this state. and of this state. So help me God. So help me God. also got to read the statement of elected officer. So uh, this I don't have to actually swear you in on. Uh, I need you just to read this out loud and basically follow that that's true. <laughs> All in full so everybody can hear. <laughs> I, Edward C. Camarillo, do solemnly affirm that I have not directly or indirectly paid, offered, promised to pay, contributed, or promised to contribute any money or thing of value, or promised any public office or employment for the giving or withholding of a vote at the election at which I was elected, so help me God.
want to first begin by, by, by thanking my fiance and, and Judge, Judge, the Honorable Judge Leal for being here and swearing, swearing me in. It's a great honor for me to have her. Uh, she's such a beautiful lady, but somebody who I respect and does so much for our judicial system. And so it's an honor for me and my family to have her able to swear me in today, again for the second time. So Judge, thank you very much for all that you do for the judicial system, for the beautiful person that you are in our community, as well as your husband and, and, and their family. For everything that you are doing, thank you so much. She's been with me for a long time, and it's, it's, she's always been there. And it's been a tough race, and she knows that. And the relationship, it's been very difficult, you know? There was no storybook to, to, to tell us how, to, how things should really be. Um, but she always was there when you needed it the most. And so, Virginia, thank you so much. I love you. Very good. And now we'll start planning the wedding now that you know things are, things are good. So that's, that's the next task on my list. Uh, my parents, my mom, my dad, uh, Michael, Rich couldn't be here, my brother Louis, Corey, Richie, Seth, all my family, my aunts, my uncles, uh, and Connie, uh, Uncle Hector, and everyone that couldn't be here. I couldn't have done it without them. Family is very important to me. Uh, they're the backbone of everything I do, and you all know that. And I want to thank them for everything that they did, all the sacrifice that they made for me, and that they, can, and they, could, and they, and that they continue to do. Uh, it means a lot to me to have them. Without them, I wouldn't be here. So, thank you all very much. There's a lot of people that helped us out uh, during the campaign. I, I can't thank all of them enough, but those of you that are here, Please know the Sears and, 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 uh, and Arnold and, and Amadeo and all the folks that helped our campaign, Desi and your family and, and, uh, and Rose and, and everybody who contributed in some way and our supporters and our contributors. I can't thank you enough for everything that you all did for me. These campaigns aren't very cheap, but you believed in me that we were going to work hard and that we were going to do good work, and you were there. Rosendo, you, all your family, everybody was a big, big help. Jameson, the Saints. I can't thank you all enough, and, and it means a lot to me that you all believe in me and believe in the work that we're going to do, and I promise you, we're going to keep working hard, and we're going to keep changing District 4, uh, but without your help and all the other people that, I, that helped me in any which way, I want to thank you all very, very much for everything, because without you all, again, I, I wouldn't be here. I also want to thank uh, Brownsville PD and, and, and the firefighters and EMS unions, uh, our, our, our unions in the community were very, very instrumental and, and helpful in, in our campaign. Those are the hardworking men and women of our community, longshoremen, our teachers, um, our letter carriers. Without their help, we wouldn't be here. And, and they supported me, and they were a big help, and I want to thank them for all that they do for Bronson, because they do a lot. And know that I'm going to always work with them and listen to them and try to do what we can to advance them, their families, and most importantly, this community. And they're very much so important. Um, I want to thank uh, Rodrigo and Mark Robinson. Mark couldn't be here because he's in National Guard training, but Mark was my campaign manager, and he did a fantastic job, and I, I wanted to thank him for everything that he did and, and how he guided us. But I also want to thank Rodrigo because Rodrigo had the intelligence, the creativity, the knowledge, and the passion to steer this campaign in the direction we wanted it to go. We wanted to tell the story, and most of you saw the videos that, that, that he created, and it was him. It wasn't me. It was his idea, his creativity, and I want to thank him for everything that he did because he told the story perfectly, and we couldn't have done it any other way. Uh, so, Rodrigo, thank you so much for all your work and your help. Finally, I want to thank the voters, District 4, uh, my constituents in the community of Bronson. Without your support, I wouldn't be here, and it means so much that you've invested your time to come out and make a choice and say that you thought I was the best candidate. And I appreciate that. And I don't take that very lightly. There's so much work to do in District 4. And I really cannot wait to continue to do it. As I mentioned many times, I wasn't perfect and I, and I don't plan to be perfect. But I plan to do as much as I can to help the city of Bronzo and my constituents. It's a different type of population, different demographics. I know that. But we're going to work on those areas that I know that we need them the most. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot more about my district the past few months, and I think I, I might have the four years. 
And I want to make sure we target every segment of that population one way or somehow we're going to do it. I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep the open door policy. I'm still going to do the coffees with the commissioner. I'm still going to focus on our youth. I'm going to do the juice with the commissioners. Those were very important to me. It's an avenue for the youth to come and meet an elected official, but to know that I'm just, just like them. I was just like them, and I still am. And the same thing with the individuals of my community. I want to sit, sit down, listen, and talk about the issues of how we're going to make District 4 better and how ultimately how that includes the other districts. And I want to thank these individuals behind me because what I do is not just what Edward Camarillo does. It's about what the commission does. And I thank them for their support and of me, but also of the things that we may be able to do on the commission. I don't ever say I, I did it all by myself because everybody knows, and especially them, that I didn't. If it wasn't for each and one of them, a lot of things wouldn't have gotten passed. But they believed in those things, and I hope in the future, and I'll bring future things to them, they'll, they'll, they'll believe in those as well. I'm here to work. I want to thank you all for every, everything you all have done. I appreciate your support. I'm ready to work. I'm ready to listen. And uh, I'm just ready to help this community. It's what I love to do. God willing, we'll keep doing it for the next four years. But I will always do the right thing all the time. Not sometimes, but all the time. And every decision I make, I, we may not see eye to eye on every decision. Let me just put that, make that clear. But know, and the constituents of District 4, know that everything I do and I say and I act is to the best interest of you and for this community alone. There's no other thing with me. I'm going to do everything I can to make the right choice. And no, we won't see eye to eye on everything. But you have my, you have my word that I'm going to do everything that I can to, pro to move this community forward and do everything that's best for the future of this community and for your households. I thank you all very much for everything. And um, thank you all again for, for, for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Item two. Item two is mayor's report. We didn't have a mayor's report. We have item three. Commissioner Edward C. Camarillo has a report. Yes. I want to first, uh, last week, Imagine Bronzeville met for their pretty much their final session and outlined a, a number of outcomes that were, that were presented to a large group of audience. I'm sorry I could not be there, um, but uh, I had kids to coach at a t-ball team and, and I had missed so much that um, I, I did not want to miss another opportunity with them. But I know that Imagine Bronzeville has been very successful in what it's, been, what it's meant to do. And at this time, there is a period of time where people can add and make comments to the current plan in place. If you, and I want to encourage everybody to do so, you can log on to the city's web, website, www.cob.us, and there will be a link on Imagine Bronzeville, or you can go to imaginebronzeville.com and make your, make your voice heard, post your comments, read through the, uh, through the, uh, through the PowerPoint and through the objectives that they've been outlined. I think it's extensive review and that the community has really gone forward and output a number of things they feel were very necessary and, and the team has really brought this all together and put it in a format that I think is very readable, very user friendly and uh, something that we can all hopefully at one point uh, approve and, and uh, look forward to, to working on. So I want to encourage every individual in the community to log on or call or email uh, their comments on Imagine Brownsville. Next, I just wanted to comment a little bit about the, the, the whole border wall, and it is, it is no mystery or, or, or anything where we are all against it. I'm, 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 it's very safe to say that nobody, wanted, nobody wants any type of fence or structure in our community. The, the fact of the matter is that there is law, and law supersedes everything else in, in, this, in this country. 
And I want to make it very, very clear that I don't believe in this current administration's policy to continue to move forward on any type of structure in our community and any other community in this country. I don't think that's the best policy for the United States of America. I think there's other ways to, to secure our borders and, and, to, and to do the things that the federal government says that it's necessary to protect our people. Putting up a structure of a fence is not the sole solution. When we were up in Washington, and we, again, we've said this time and time again, I think the commission made it very, very clear where we, where we believe the direction should be taken. And the alternatives that were presented, I thought were very viable and something that should be strongly considered. Well, we've been told that that's, that's, not, you know, that's not the direction the federal government wishes to take, and therefore there's still ongoing negotiations. And because of the ongoing, ongoing negotiations, we need to be very careful in the actions that the commission takes in the future. And so I just want to make it very clear that I know I am strongly against any type of a structure to be a barrier to any community, uh, but I realize that there is so much more at stake in terms of the future and future growth of Ronzo and development in this community, which must be weighed very, very carefully. And so with that, we will continue to fight and work as hard as we can for all interests, not just part of the community's interest, but for everybody's interest and what's best for the city of Ronzo. It is a shame what is happening, and there's no doubt on my mind that it is the wrong thing to do, but know that we will continue to do all that we can to find a, 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 a positive course of action for this community. Thank you. No one from Lowe's Hardware? Uh, were they contacted? Yes, they were. But they didn't know who they were going to send according to what it was. They did not know who they were going to send, so I don't know if they sent anybody. No, we got Is there anyone from communities and schools? Yeah, come on up, communities and schools. proclamation to you guys for all the good work that you do which is standing before us and many more children that we've helped. Um, I want to thank the board members, Ms. Marta Gutierrez, um, Sheriff uh, Omar Lucio, Mr. Gus Reina, Chief Gus Reina, um, Mimi Lucio, and I don't forget, Mario Villarreal. Thank you all for all the hard work. I sit on this board and serving on this board I've learned with the, the great job that they do for this community, not only for Bronzo, but throughout the whole valley. So thank you very much for, for all your hard work. Estella, will you read the proclamation? If you don't mind, I'd like to read the proclamation. Um, Communities and Schools is a program that's involved at Oliveira Middle School with my friend Sally. And being an educator there, I can honestly tell you that I, as the city secretary, she'd allow me to read this because we see the impact at Oliveira Middle School. When Sally comes in and counsels the children, and offers the services 
and everything that you as a program bring to our schools is something that we were lacking. And through your service, our children, as you see before you, are the ones that benefit from these services. So thank you for that. And on behalf of the City Commission, of course, the parents of the children. So at uh, this time, I'd like to read a proclamation of the City Commission of Brownsville, Texas, declaring May 2009 as Communities and School Months in our city. Whereas Communities and Schools, Cameron County Incorporated, was founded in 1995 as a nonprofit organization and is one of 28 CIS programs in the state of Texas, which is one of 27 states and the District of Columbia that are part of the CIS network. And whereas CIS is an in-school multidisciplinary approach to decreasing the dropout rate in Texas schools by increasing each participant's opportunity to be successful in school, which is accomplished by facilitating the coordinated delivery of community resources at elementary, middle, and secondary campuses for young people and their families who live in an at-risk situation. And whereas in Texas, CIS has benefited from the support of both the state's legislative and educational leadership because this program works to keep students in school by providing services that they need and has achieved success to that extent that in 2007-2008, CIS kept over 96% of its participants in school, with that figure remaining at a constant 95% level. And whereas the Cameron County CIS is currently providing services through agreements with school districts in Brownsville, Harlingen, San Benito, and La Feria, and continues to work for further expansion into other districts. Now, therefore, we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by the virtue of the authority vested by the Charter of said city, hereby declare, on behalf of all our citizens, May 2009, as Communities and Schools Month in our city, and further congratulate the Governor of Texas and the State of Texas as CIS celebrates its 20th anniversary statewide. Congratulations, and thank you for your service. Just real quick, I'd like to know that uh, there's business uh, involved. Uh, Honorable Mayor and uh, City Commissioners, I want to thank you on behalf of CIS. Uh, this is what CIS is all about, working with students to make sure that they stay in school. Uh, we target, as far as last year, 2,700. This year we're targeting 3,700 students. Uh, our whole goal is to make sure that students stay in school from elementary all the way to high school. It's through this collaborative effort that we have with the school districts, Browns of San Benito, La Feria, and San Benito, that they are able to work with us, and we just work with the counselors. Uh, they are our future, and, and we just need to make sure that there's no barriers or obstacles that would impede them from going to school. And as you know, as times are different from when I went to school, and uh, it's, it's amazing the work that our case managers do, and that cooperation from the parents, because without the parents, and their cooperation and, and having their uh, children participate, it wouldn't work. <clears throat> so again, thank you. And uh, uh, on behalf of the CIS staff, there's a, a total of 47 in our uh, staff. And, uh, but they do wonders. And I do. I always give credit to our case managers because they're the ones who are in the trenches. Ms. Medina, Ms. Sanchez, they're the ones who are doing out there and make Ms. Perez and myself, who is my assistant, make us look good. So thank you, and thank you very much. Thank you.
Item 5. Move to approve. Second. A motion is second to approve any discussion. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All in favor? That was to approve all the items on the consent items. Uh, Board of Commissions, item six. Item six, consideration and action to appoint or reappoint one member to the Heritage Council. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Commissioners. <coughs> the Heritage Council finds itself with a vacancy due to, due to uh, one resignation. And keep in mind, as, as you well know, each year when we have to do this, that they each, each uh, candidate has to fit into a certain category. What, the one that's resigned is an attorney. And w what we've done, is, as we normally do, is that the Heritage Council comes up with a recommendation that we present to you. Not only have, has the recommendation fit the category, is not only as an attorney, but he's purchased a house in West Brownsville, historic home, and renovated it. So we would, we would certainly like your approval on Trey Mendez for that uh, slot. I move to approve <coughs> Trey Mendez. Mr. Goodman, did you did you attach an application form? May I have the floor? My only question is, did y'all submit an application? Because I didn't see one in the packet. You, it's, it's on file with City Secretary. Do you have it in your okay. packet? <coughs> Secretary, sir. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Who seconded that motion? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Item 7. Item 7. <coughs> Consideration and action to appoint one member to the Brownsville Public Utilities Board. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if my, may I have the floor, please? I'd like to uh, make a motion to appoint. Dr. David Morales to the Brownsville Public Utilities Board. Dr. Morales is a resident of Brownsville. Uh, his family is involved in, in the community. And um, I make that motion. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Garza, second by Commissioner Atkinson. Any discussion? Very good choice. Uh, congratulations, Dr. 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 Morales. David Morales. Morales. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, I would move that we move executive, uh, the item of executive session. I would move to hear it at this time. We have a motion Thank to, uh, is, are the parties here? Uh, are they right? Is everybody here? Yes, they are. Here? Yes, sir, we're ready. Okay. Okay, we have a motion okay. by Commissioner uh, Longoria, second by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We will adjourn to executive session and be back uh, shortly, probably 15 minutes. Uh, I sound hoarse. Do not fear. I do not have the H1N1. I have an allergy. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a cold. Just in case anybody's worried. Take a deep breath. <laughs> hey, Pete.
for me. Staff, City Secretary, then we proceed. Thank you for waiting. We have the assistant city manager. Just back uh, executive session, item number. Uh, I think we're at number eight. A, please. <clears throat> Public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 2009-856. Oh, we say, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. <coughs> item A. We just returned from executive session. Item A. From where? Presentation, discussion, possible action pursuant to. No, that was the executive session. It's that was the executive session item. It's just possible action. There's a commission. But that would have been that would have been taken care of. That's an executive session, Mayor. That's position. Based on the agenda, that okay, actions let's on go, this. Let's go to uh, item um, eight. <coughs> So, no. let's go to item uh, seven. Right. I need a motion to uh, open this up for discussion and action again. Well, I right. thought that was already taken care of. Yeah, we'll move number eight. We've already, we moved on we, eight. We already Excuse voted. me, wait a minute. We already we voted on it. Don't talk all at the same time. City Attorney, do we need to bring this back? The appointment is improper. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. The, the appointment itself isn't improper. Uh, there is a matter of filing uh, the ordinance with the city secretary's office, but we can do that after the meeting. It's not a matter for the committee. So then this can stay? Yes, it can. Okay. Based on your advice, that's what I was doing. That's correct. Okay. Item number eight. Item number eight, consider public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 2009-856-00. An ordinance to amend the fee for disposing of tires at the city landfill and dealing with related <coughs> matters. The proposal before you is to set the fee for tires at uh, uh, $100 a ton. Who approve? The uh, motion for Commissioner uh, well, well, Action to public, public hearing. Close public hearing. You want to make it? Move to close public hearing if anybody. <coughs> Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Yes. Yes. Okay, we have a second. Uh, any further discussion? How much is it now? Is it, it's being increased, correct? No, it's being it's decreased. From 200 to 100. The, 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 as as I understand, the landfill has gotten some sort of certification so it can accept a lot more tires. And so the idea is to reduce the fee so to generate more tires and more money based on the volume. Okay. Do you want to continue or do you want to close it? We close it. Well, yeah. unless the commission is what I want to hear. Um, I want to make sure you. Well, we'll draw your motion then. I'll draw my motion to close public hearing so we can hear it out. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Proceed. Go ahead. I've said what I had to say about it, man. <laughs> there's, if, say there's, that, there's if there are questions, questions if there are questions that you know, sure. How does this impact us? What, 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 why do we want more tires in our landfill? Volume. So we can put more asphalt in the dirt. I mean, what do we? Uh, we're um, we're going to try to alleviate some of our illegal dumping. So we're going to try to get the citizens to come in and bring these uh, tires into the landfill. Uh, we have a process where we can. Uh, shred them, recycle them, either use them in, uh, as cover 
uh, daily cover, or are we looking into making some revenue with them too, eventually, down the road? And are we increasing the fines for illegal dumping? Uh, yes, uh, well, we got uh, our uh, health directors helping us out out there. I, mean, I think if you're going to lower the fine for, I mean, lowering the fee for putting in the landfill, you might want to, on the other hand, increase, increase the fine for the illegal dumping, so that way, you know, if you don't do it, you get charged. Let's right. take to take it's on the tires, and when, when the, some of the used tire shops, I know they, they slice their tires. Is that being separated at any point, or is it just getting all dumped in? Uh, most of those tires are not even coming into our city landfill. Where are they, where are they going? They're either going into Mexico, Matamoros, into interior Mexico. Where they, if they're coming in from GMS, if they're, be, they're put in GMS containers, so they're going to Matamoros? I don't no, think so. no, none of those tires are coming into the city of Brownsville. Really? Uh, they either have a private contractor that comes to fix them up, takes them to uh, Matamoros or <coughs> interior Mexico. Okay. Mr. Torres, who, who, I mean, we're reducing the fee from $100. And we're mm -hmm. talking about how little money we have, and <laughs> we're increasing fees in other areas, and here we are decreasing. They're not coming in, so there's not really much revenue being made. Well, do we have the numbers, Commissioner? If, 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 the numbers, if the numbers are there to back it up, all right, fine. The idea is that it will generate more. We're, we're out of the market as far as any interest in anyone bringing tires mm -hmm. to our landfill. What we're doing is we're, we're, we're reducing the fee, but we, we, along with this, we're going to simplify it and, and try to generate uh, the regular homeowner to bring tires to the and say we're going to charge a dollar per tire, which is the equivalent would be a hundred dollars per ton. But we recently got uh, uh, firmer rights at our landfill to bring in more tires, more capacity of tires, you know, done by engineers, outside engineers that allowed us to get those permits. And actually, it was it was free. It was done. It was done free of charge for us. So we got to thank them. But we're trying to see how much tires we can generate in a certain time period into our landfill. Let's say we can generate, let's put it simple, if we can generate a million tires per year, we may, we'll make a million dollars in tires. So that, to, that's what we're doing. When I had my tires changed, there's a $15 charge for the recycling fee. If we're charging a dollar a tire and we're getting it at four, you better believe that that client's going to want to put, put them in the back of my pickup truck and go leave them at a dollar at the landfill. Right? Our, 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 our understanding is. Yeah, and our understanding is we got a lot of people coming into into Brownsville from outside and and, and and buying tires and taking them up and all things like that. More important, we have a lot of tires that are thrown in in our in our in our in our uh, drainage, drainage ditches, ditches etc. Yeah. And we're trying to give people the incentive to bring them in, and they understand they'll understand that it's a very minimal fee if they bring the tires to the line. Thank you. So I move to any further further discussion. I'll move to close public hearing. If Second. That's we have a motion closed by Commissioner Trayani, second by Commissioner Camarillo. And then I'd move to, uh, we vote? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then I'd move to approve, and I'd ask that uh, we also bring back the, uh, the, the fine portion of this and see if we can increase the fine for illegal dumping on tires so that there's more of a penalty if you're, you're caught doing that. Second. So that there's more of an incentive. Okay, we got a motion and a second. By Commissioner Cisneros. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Uh, public comments, item nine. Item nine, public comments. Number one, Mr. Dagoberto Barrera. Honorable gentlemen of this commission, and my fellow Americans. I'm glad to be back before this respected body to thank you at times, at times to quiz you, and at times to suggest ideas. I'm glad to be back before, since you are all very young, my suggestions to you today might not be appropriate because of your age. My suggestion of you today is to keep an eagle eye on your body system because there are silent death diseases that can be fatal to you if you do not detect them early. After a series of exams, PSA blood tests and biopsies, I was diagnosed with prostate toxic cancer cells in the early stages. 
After 37 treatments, sessions with radiation therapy, he was completely eradicated in our local ecology center. It was a worrisome three months of treatments, but the specialists there are all young people and professionals, very helpful in every way. Thank goodness that we have a cancer center here besides the famous MD Anderson in Houston. I want to thank you for your free public service that you're now rendering to this city. The issue has been settled by the Judge <coughs> Janet Leal. I thank you for your free services to our community. All past city commissioners were never compensated. Public service means to serve the citizens of this city for a free few years. To give back to the community, not for the few dollars benefits that the city gives you. I want to thank you for not raising our taxes, Pete. I want to thank publicly Mr. Leonel Garza for his public service to our community as he seeks higher office. I want to thank Mr. Camarillo for his well-earned victory for a new term of office. For those who must compete in their runoffs, I wish you all good luck. We have a good system of government in selecting our leadership. I have confidence that good people will be elected to lead our city forward. On the border fence, our Creator once said, let there be light, and light, light came on on our planet. I say today, let there be a wall or a fence to protect us. And the, and the fence was built. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Walker, Calvin Walker. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your comment. Thank you. Mr. Barretta is a hard act to follow. <laughs> Honorable Mayor, City Commissioners, I'm Calvin Walker, a local architect. I've had the honor of designing and overseeing the construction of several city buildings by your Public Works Department. Starting with City Plaza, the old Pan American Texas Commerce Bank, the building construction crews provided all of the construction work and I want to remind you what a steal that purchase was. Twelve downtown lots, a three-story parking garage, a two-story reinforced concrete building, plus four lots of, of parking across the street. Recent projects with the public work crews include remodeling at the police department, several small projects at the main library, and ongoing as I speak, the work at the airport getting ready to welcome American Eagle Airlines to Brownsville. I wanted you to hear this from a Brownsville professional who has been pleasantly surprised by the quality of their work. This group of men have saved our taxpayers thousands of dollars by doing this work as employees of our city. I do have a mild complaint, however. They do such good work that they're constantly in demand by city departments, and it's sometimes difficult for me to schedule them for the projects I'm working on for you. <laughs> I say all this to remind you, Mayor and City Commissioners, that the Public Works <coughs> staff, led by Santana Torres and Jorge Morales, have done a very professional job for the city, and that is something that you should be very proud of. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good to hear once in a while. Some Thank you. Public comments. Uh, let's go to the next item, please. Tim. Action items. Item 10. Consideration and action on resolution number 2009 038, expressing opposition to the border wall. I, mean, I want to make a motion to indefinitely postpone this ordinance at the time. Resolution. We have a motion, we have a second uh, to postpone any comments. I'll make some comments. I think uh, by postponing it's a way to not want to come forward and stand against the repossession of the city land because 
It's scheduled to go before Judge Haney, I think June 6th. And the agreement I've read with DHS, there's a lot of ambiguity there. And I think it's a bad agreement that's going to be very costly to the city. So to uh, not hear or approve the resolution and stand against in opposition mm -hmm. to the wall is, in, a, in, a, in fact, mm -hmm. assenting to allow them to build a fence. Uh, the, the resolution sends a clear signal and allows us to go to a third party that will mediate this and hopefully uh, get us a better agreement with DHS than what is being proposed. Based on that, we have a motion. May I have a tool? Yes, sir. What was you asked that this be put on? You received a second from Commissioner Edward Camarillo. What Commissioner Edward Camarillo had originally proposed and asked to be put on the agenda is not what is currently in the agenda. So my question to you is, you ask for help from the city commission, or the city commission doesn't want to help, but at the moment that you were helped and you received a second from a fellow commissioner, you by then inserted something that was not what commissioner had originally intended to present at this meeting. We are against it, but we do not want to submit this resolution. Therefore, the motion being made is to strike this proposal, and we will come back in the next meeting with the proper one that was supposed to be submitted, according to Commissioner Edward Cullen, when he second your motion. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Longoria, you're misrepresenting the facts because no, I don't I have misrepresent anything. Sir, I'm stating a fact. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to respond to what you're saying. No, you're here to create no. you see, <coughs> a mixed message. Why don't you follow the procedures? You I'd, move for the I'd move the question. The, the, uh, I would move the question. The, uh, Do I get a second? Can second. Modified can we have the parliamentarian? Can yeah, we have the parliamentarian? A point of order. Uh, there's a move the question that's on the table. A move the question cuts off debate and it requires two thirds vote. With a two thirds vote, the question that's on the table is immediately put to a vote. So Commissioner Triani has moved the question. There has been a second. There would be a motion on the move the question if that passes. The previous motion goes immediately to a vote. Okay. So let's uh, do that. Sit that. I think there's much representation back, so we'll call for the vote. Go ahead. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. So we're going on the next agenda item. Oh, you, then now, you, now, now, you, now you move to uh, postpone indefinitely. You, 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 you would mo make. Uh, no. Motion. Okay, we have a motion. It's Commissioner Gordia. Commissioner Camarillo, second by Commissioner Atkinson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. Okay. Go to the next item. Item 11, consideration and action on amendment number 33 to contract with HNTB for engineering design work for taxiways D&E for Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport. Mayor of City Commissioners, the purpose of this item is to request City Commission action to authorize HN2B to start the design work for reconstruction of taxiways Delta and Echo. Taxiways Delta and Echo, Echo at the airport of the primary air carrier taxiways leading from the primary air carrier runway to the passenger terminal. Move to approve. Second. second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Nine. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next Thank item. You. Item 12, consideration and action, authorizing an amendment to a lease with Fisher and Company Incorporated. Mayor, members of the commission, the city commission is requested to approve this lease with Fisher Corporation. It's actually an amendment to the lease, an existing lease. The Fisher Corporation, as you may recall, is a well-known maker of automotive parts, including parts for Toyota, etc. The Fisher Company will be installing equipment that will produce car seats. The company will create a minimum of 50 <coughs> new permanent jobs at the airport and is in the process of making its investment right now in terms of large machines and so forth that will be stamping out parts. And we look forward to a long and continued relationship with the Fisher Corporation. The lease itself will generate <coughs> revenue in the neighborhood of about $153,387 
of revenue out of the buildings, out of the, uh, the seven buildings, Fisher will occupy three of those seven buildings and produce that revenue as new revenue for the airport, if you would. I'll be happy to address any questions. Uh, can, can I have a motion and a second, then we'll open up for discussion? I had a motion. Motion, please. second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, the yes, lease sir. that's currently there, what, it, what was the revenue that was supposed to bring in, and why? How did it change for the new lease? Well, what they're doing is moving from, they're, they're expanding their operations into more space. Therefore, what it's doing is changing the amount of revenue that we're actually getting from them. There are a total of seven buildings that make up the complex. They were previously in two of the buildings. They will now be in four of the buildings with options to go to six of the buildings. Okay? And that increase in space is what generates additional revenue. And your, uh, your your airport advisory board is, is recommending this. Yes, sir. I move to approve. Second. We already have a motion. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next Thank item. You. Item 13, consideration and action to request funding in the amount of 30000 for 4th of July celebration to be <coughs> conducted at the Brownsville Sports Park. Move to approve. Second. Charlie, just we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? I'd like to make a point. Just to let, um, well, go ahead. Go uh, ahead. Mr. Joker was going to make this presentation, but he had to leave to a Boy Scout meeting. And uh, there is a usual funding we asked for for the 4th of July, uh, which is going to be moved to the sports park, by the way. So the, the, the event will be, con will be done at the sports park this year. And also, we have uh, contracted uh, with, a, with a, one of the, a major band, Boys to Men, to be there and uh, take stage. And so it should that be a fantastic new. show. Boys to Men. Boys to men, yes. Boys to men. So we welcome the community there. Should that this, it, it'll be a free concert, and uh, uh, and obviously we'll have the fireworks this day. And it'll be the first time at the sports park. So Congratulations. We're hoping to have a good, uh, fun event. Commissioner Atkinson. I'd like to say, too, just to, I want to thank uh, Chris Patterson and his staff, Tuffy Martinez of the sports park, for making it happen. They're real... Um, dedicated and they played an integral part in bringing boys to men, which people in my generation know who they are. They're around in the early 90s. So we're looking forward to having them there. I'm sure there'll be thousands of people there. So we encourage the city citizens of Brown to go out there and support the sports park, support your city, and support um, what we're bringing for the city. It's, it's going to be a real good uh, event. Any further discussion? All in There'll favor? be any tailgating, Charlie? Sure. Tailgating, of course. If that's going to happen. All right. So, so then there is further yeah. discussion. Yes, yes, sir. No. It'll be uh, basically like it was done at the okay. ITEC. Uh, hopefully, we'll have more freedom, uh, more room, and uh, we'll, all those fun events will, will continue to spread. Thanks, sir. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Item 14, consideration and action on resolution number 2009-037 to authorize the city manager to accept grant number 2091001 from the Office of the Governor Criminal Justice Division for gang initiative funding for fiscal year 2009. Move to approve. Second. second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Unless the chief wants to give a presentation, explain what this is. No, it's just a resolution uh, authorizing our city manager to accept this grant. And it's, the grant's going to be in the amount of $133,746 from the Criminal Justice Division of the uh, Governor's Office. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item. Item 15, consideration and action to award a term contract for architectural services on a rotation list for the city of Brownsville. Move to approve. Second. Any discussions? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Thank you. I'll be in there. Item 16, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase, delivery, and installation of fencing at the sports park. Staff recommendation is to award a, term, uh, a contract for the purchase, delivery, and installation of fencing uh, for the perimeter of the multi-sports field and the equipment storage area at the Brunswick Sports Park to, uh, to the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, Texas Correctional Industries, uh, TCI of Huntsville, Texas, in the amount of 
$221.96 and this is uh, deliver and install. Yep. They will complete the work within 120 ca uh, calendar days. Funding is in place and it will be reimbursed 100% by the BCIC. What approves? We have a motion. Okay. We have a second. <coughs> second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. No. Carry the next item. Okay. Item 17, consideration and action to award a contract for cargo Excuse building me. parking lot improvements for the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport. The sub recommendation is to award a contract for the cargo building parking lot improvements for the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport to R&R &R Paving uh, a Company of San Benito, Texas, the low responsible bidder for the Little amount approved. of 196000 Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? This is the one behind uh, uh, Farias's... Uh, That's on the cargo... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's ready to move in on the first. $22,000 move in. Thank you. Okay. All in I favor? <coughs> Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 18, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase of one 2009 year model landfill dozer for the Public Works Department, 415 Landfill Division. Second. We have a motion, a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, go ahead. Is, uh, this is by board. Yes, that is correct. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item 19, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase of one 2009 aerial platform lift equipped truck for the traffic department. Sub recommendation is to award a contract for the purchase of one 2009 F550 uh, truck mounted with the telescopic aerial platform uh, for the traffic department to fuel pad motors of Netherlands, Texas for a total HEAC contract pricing of $71,739.88. Would approve. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 20, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase of one 2009 fire apparatus for the Brazil Fire Department. Second. Second. Have, have we, have, we have a motion and a second open for discussion. Do we have the staffing of facilities. Are they replacing old ambulances? Uh, we are replacing, in this case, uh, this is a fire apparatus, a pumper oh, okay. for fire department. Oh, okay. Is that what you read? No, I read the, the one on the yeah. fire department. We still have number 21, which deals with the ambulances. Okay. Yeah, this is a pumper. This is brand new to replace an old one. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item 21, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase of three ambulances, type 2 Fraser modules for the Brownsville Fire Department. Would approve? Second. second. Just one motion correction. Second. Go ahead, Any discussion? Uh, just one correction. It should be type 1, not type 2. That's the only. So do we approve the type 1? Type 1, yes. Diabetes? So the, uh, the, the ambulance, there's one or two that do not have air conditioning. What are you going to do with those? I'm sorry? I couldn't hear. There's a couple of ambulances that do not have air conditioning. What are you planning <coughs> to do with those? Uh, this is to replace those that do not there's have air yes, conditioning. Yes, we're replacing all the equipment, sir. And what are you going to do with the old ones? Well, we, the we send them to other departments that have a need, and if, uh, if it's not cost effective for the city to, to have those uh, uh, in the fleet, we will put them out for auction. To make some money. Yes, to get some money back. No, we auction all oh, the, we the equipment. Money. The transfers. Uh, I mean, okay, uh, any further discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Motion to Thank adjourn. you. Second. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. 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 Aye.